Today, I will present to you my Fluid Dynamics video project, which will focus on safman taylor instabilities, or more generally, viscous fingering in a healy shaw cell. So what is it? Well, viscous fingering is the formation of patterns in a morphologically unstable interface between two fluids in a porous medium or in a healy shaw cell. When a low viscous fluid is injected into a high viscous fluid, the less viscous fluid tends to jet out from the injection point in a way that resembles fingers, hence the term viscous fingering. So why do we care about viscous fingering? Well, it has an impact in many areas. One example is in groundwater and soil contamination. Fingering may influence the spreading of a spill, so for environmental reasons, it is important to quantify to what extent fingering will occur in a polluted area. Viscous fingering is also a problem in petroleum recovery, where water is often used to drive oil from the reservoir. Another example where viscous fingering occurs is in liquid chromatography, which is used to separate chemical components of a given sample by passing it through a porous medium. In 1958, Safman and Taylor gave the first theory and performed viscous fingering experiments in a healy shaw cell. That is why these instabilities are also referred to as safman taylor instabilities. What is a healy shaw cell? Well, it was invented by Henry Healy Shaw circa 1898. Simply put, it is a system of two parallel plates separated by a very small gap size, as shown by the cartoon drawing. Using a Healy Shaw cell, Safman and Taylor were able to show that the instability of an interface moving towards a more viscous fluid can produce a growth of a single long finger, as pictured, or multiple fingers. The motion in a Healy Shaw cell is mathematically analogous to the two dimensional flow in a porous medium. Darcy's law, which describes potential flow through a porous medium, therefore also applies to Healy Shaw cells. Let's begin with the Navier Stokes equation and make a couple of assumptions. First, that it's incompressible. Second, that it's a steady flow. Third, that we can ignore the effects of gravity because the gap between the plates is very, very small. And lastly, we will ignore the inertial terms because the Reynolds number is also very, very small. This gives us Stokes equation. Now we're going to look at the viscous terms and non-dimensionalize them. We know that L is much, much greater than B. Therefore, 1 over L squared is much, much less than 1 over B squared. Because of this, we can ignore the X and Y components in the viscous terms. This gives us the equation in the top left corner. If we integrate this equation twice, it'll give us the equation in the top right corner. Using the no-slip boundary condition, we can solve for the constants B and A. Now plugging those values back into U, we get the equation as seen. Taking the average of u over the entire gap gives us the equation in the bottom right corner. These equations describe the mean velocity in a healy shaw cell, which corresponds to the velocity in a two-dimensional porous medium. Now I will leave you with the demonstration as shown earlier. If you want to recreate this demonstration, here are the materials I used. I used plexiglass as the plates with a 0.25 millimeter spacing which is created using glass covers. My high viscous fluid is glycerin and my low viscous fluid is water. 